Hello and welcome. So I am uh, going to do a little project today. Um, my sister, she will be celebrating her birthday. If, um, if, if, if her plan is right, she's actually going to be... Uh, she's going to do that today. So, then uh, if in that case, if you see this, well, happy birthday. Okay. Um, but anyway, I am uploading uh, a video of this project since it is a... Uh, I wanted to make a birthday gift since she did not very very subtly suggest that I might uh, make a belt for her. I um, got a piece of a belt that I picked out from uh, a few old belts. I mean, this is the stuff that, well, it's, it's sort of falling apart where you look at it. Uh, some sort of old and not particularly good belt. I took the um, buckle of it and now I'm going to make the um, old strap. I have some leather laying about, uh, so I'm gonna. Well, I f I first, I'm gonna design a bit, uh, draw it, draw something out. So I've sketched a few uh, ideas here. Um, now, first of all, I uh, thought that maybe simply a uh, braided kind of uh, belt would be nice. So that was the first sketch. But then I uh, made a few others just to make sure. Um, I think I'm still going to stick with the braided one, but I'm not going to make a very tight braid. I I think I'm going to do it as as I sketch it in the most left one, a bit of a loose uh, uh, braid. Now, to that end, I cut a piece of leather already, and um, well, the idea is that this is the end that is uh, that has will have a few perforations on the end, and uh, it's the the opposite end of the the, the buckle will be on the other side. And then it splits up in three different things, and I can braid those, and then we go to the other end. And then I have a small piece cut out here that is used to... Um, okay, let's see if I can actually do this with one hand. I don't know. Just a moment. But then I will have one piece of leather here that will wrap around this and attach to the end of the braid here. The, the problem with this uh, stuff is, is uh, when it is when it becomes wet, it becomes really malleable, and you don't really want that when it is um, uh, when you're wearing the thing. As uh, when it rains, for example, and you walk with this around it, it actually becomes stretchable when it becomes wet. To prevent that from happening, I'm uh, probably going to have to soak it in some beeswax and or coat it at the very least. Um, I, I just don't really have any proper. Uh, tools to actually just coat it, as coating it will, uh, just coating it will make the surface area a bit um, weird, and I, and I don't really uh, like the color. I, I want it to be a bit darker than it is now, though I'm not sure. I have actually soaked some um, some of this leather in beeswax entirely. That was for a different project. It was for the uh, for a, um, a a drinking flask. That was actually absolutely necessary to soak it, as that uh, prevents any water from seeping through it. Um, because that that it actually, if you just keep it like this and you would make a bottle of that, then um, it water would actually be able to seep through the material, as it is not actually fully watertight. Um, you prevent that from happening when you actually let it soak up beeswax as well. I, that's fatty and it fills up any possible openings that are in the material. But I'm gonna have to figure out what exactly I'm gonna do with that yet. But that's not the first step now. Now we first need to just soak it in water, get it a bit flexible, stretch it a bit and then braid it. And dry it again. It needs to dry up entirely before you can start working with beeswax altogether again. Because otherwise it will just not soak up properly and it's, there's a potential reaction I believe when you... Uh, I haven't really tried it out mostly because I've actively been avoiding a situation where you heat this up while it is still wet. But supposedly that could actually give some problems with the uh, texture of the leather. So I'm not going to try and risk that. Okay, so we've got the whole stuff braided now and um, I'm trying to sew this all together but boy oh boy oh boy this is a mess I hadn't really thought about what the implications were for actually making three strands and then trying to 
uh, put them together on this side because this is just uh, it's messy but we're gonna see if it works How did it end up like this? Oh, bloody hell. Oh. I skipped a hole. I skipped a bloody hole. Oh, lovely. One of the major advantages of working around the camera, you don't actually pay a whole lot of attention to what you're actually doing, apparently. So, do you know that annoying feeling when you're really, really fucked up? Well, I've got that one right now, except for using this thing. And this is not this thing. What's the difference? Well, this one is thick and doesn't break very easily, and this is just normal bloody wire. I've been breaking this thing over and over again. I was just getting frustrated as to how the hell does it keep breaking? But well, yeah, that's the answer. I was using the wrong one. And I'm just really annoyed. I mean, right now it's actually sort of set, but it's, yeah, it's not really sturdy. So I'm going to have to, well, <laughs> do it. Well, I'm not going to do it again. I'm just going to use one of these and uh, go through it entirely again. Should be relatively easy now, as now at least all the holes are aligned. So, I guess that's good. But, oh, sometimes I'm really annoyed with myself when this kind of shit happens. So, yeah, gonna do that. Finally we're done with the sewing. It's sort of a sturdy now. Looks kind of nicer. Uh, I uh, decided in the end to twist, instead of using just this wire, I twisted it together with uh, a bit of black, so that it's a bit of a more... I don't know if the camera picks it up, and yeah, it doesn't really pick it up. But, at well, they are twisted together, and, uh, well, I used that along the entire loop, so that looks kind of nice now. And, um, well, I had to, uh, this is a bit darker now because I had to make it wet after I made a mistake and pressed a uh, shape in there that, yeah, I wanted to press my little, um, well, you know, my, uh, my, my channel icon <laughs> on there. But that failed, sort of. So I had to make it wet again and uh, get it out. So I'm going to let that dry now and then I'm going to just soak this in uh, beeswax in the end. Now that's the method I have available right now to actually protect this. I don't actually have a really good coating for this to uh, to do this. Oh, and first we have to press in a few holes on the other end, otherwise it won't actually be usable. That would be sort of a pity.
So, okay, now all that's left to do is to coat this with a bit of beeswax. So, yeah, a bit of a pan still from the last time I did that. Well, we're gonna have to melt this up now. But as to when, uh, who exactly got the brilliant idea of chucking a pencil into this? Don't know. So I'm boiling the water here because, um, well, if if we're gonna put the the uh, pan of beeswax directly onto the fire, it's gonna get a lot hotter than 100 degrees Celsius. Oop, oops, my light is going off. I see. Just a moment. Okay. Ouch. But anyway, the. To prevent the stuff from becoming too hot, um, I'm putting this up so the beeswax won't be hotter than 100 degrees Celsius before putting the leather in. Well, leather will actually start deforming if um, if the temperature is higher than, I believe, 70 degrees Celsius. 100 is really sort of a max where I'm gonna dip it in for, well, any amount of time. And with 100 uh, degrees Celsius it will generally be quite doable, at least. It won't immediately go and start to go um, shrivelly. It's just relatively safe. I'm still not saying that you should keep it in there for a long amount of time because it will still probably go shrivelly. Yeah, you get the idea. Mmm, it starts to smell quite good already. So let's see here. Yeah, okay, I can get my pencil out again. Yeah, nice. So, okay, there are some chunks in there still, so it's not quite ready yet, but we should be good to... It should be at a good temperature, actually, now that I think of it. It's not quite... it means that it's not quite um, done heating up to 70 degrees. The, 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 the wax also melts at about 70 degrees. Um, so, it means that it, not, that it isn't quite fully 70 degrees, so we should be safe to let it um, draw into the leather right now. So let's just get into it. Just go and draw it through the entire length of this. That's the, that's the way I did it last time. I just dipped in for a moment and let it just soak through and put it through in the meantime. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, let's see. Okay, so let's would have known that it would be quite hot. Uh, and uh, boil down a bit, by the way. Like I said, I don't want to get it too hot. There's a bit of residue on there. Just gonna go back once to make sure that anything that is too much on there can go back into here and just leave it a little bit, do it a bit slower so that it really gets the time to heat up properly so it doesn't immediately cool down once we put it out of the wax. I'm checking in the whole buckle for a bit because the problem with the buckle is if it doesn't heat up entirely um, the wax will actually just condense down on it before it actually has the, ability, the time to, to fall off so I'm just gonna have to heat it up entirely and then get it out and let it drip out a bit to prevent that from happening I'm gonna have to clean up muck a bit still, there's some rusts of the wax still on there, so I'm gonna cut and scrub those off and then it should be good to go really. So I just started cleaning up this thing, but 
Now I start to realize that um, last time I did this, I made a build that had um, well, I had a pattern pressed into it rather than a pattern made by the leather itself. Um, but now I'm realizing that in this case, because I used the leather itself for the pattern, the wax is going to get between every little fold. Oh, so this is going to be one hell of a clean-up job. You know what? This is not worth it. I'm just going to get a brush and brush it all clean. As well as I can. It's going to be messy, but uh, it's going to be a bit more effective, I think, than keep doing this till the end of days. Due to some interaction with the brush and the shape of the build, we get a little bit of a um, curious little finish here that I'm actually sort of liking. It's sort of rough, it's not, it's not really, I wouldn't say it's very pretty or anything, but it just adds a bit of, it's a little bit. Although a bit of worn, but and I am not actually feeling the need to brush this off, so I think it's actually finished as it is now. Uh, well, there are maybe a few bits that I want to clean up a bit further, but all in all, this should actually be quite near done. So this is about the height where I wear a belt. So far, so good. Now, there's one question that popped up right now. I took the length of this belt on my own measurements. Uh, at least, well, I did not actually literally do that, but the measurement that uh, the length that I used is one that I actually determined er much earlier on my own uh, waistline. So, now depending on exactly what my sister's waistline is this might turn out to be a bit of a um, <laughs> awkward thing in the end i might have to solve so and maybe add a bit on here in some way uh, should not be too difficult but it, well i hope it just fits but we can have to see that anyway i hope you enjoyed this and See you the next time, hopefully.